All right. Beep the Clash! In Winter Clash, are you ready? Winter Clash is just over two weeks away, and although it's not complete, the riders list is looking stacked. You've got the likes of Nils, Broskow, Eugen, Wellsmore, Sizemore. Tell me more, tell me more. Also Fabian Ennis, who I've not really heard much of in a fair bit. So it'll be interesting to see what he's up to and a special guest appearance from Brian Schema. <laughs> Iliara is already deep in training like he's Ivan Drago. And those skates he's wearing, are they the D-skin dogmas? They look half decent actually. The Hang Lose a Lot have also been dropping some really funny videos in the run up to it as well. Mein Schatz, his name is Ty Chris. But who do you reckon's gonna win the thing? I don't have a clue. All the stunts are performed by professionals. Do not attempt this yourself. Tell me a sound that's better than this. Introducing the not so extra small shell and the schmedium shell. People ask for it and it's arrived. If you book them, they will come. Well, sort of, it's not quite here yet. Like making molds isn't exactly cheap and it's also not like the rollerblading market is absolutely massive just to be able to take a big risk on it. So Julio's done the smart thing, created a capsule collection. All the like money from that is gonna go into funding the shells. So if you're into it and you need that shell, if you're between sizes, man, back it. Julio sells medium shells on the seashore. <laughs> It's a big move and cool to see them skates pushing forward and doing great things, listening to what uh, consumers want and then doing it. Started open source, created their own mold, ad free, now they've got six. At first I thought this might be a Schmedium sample, but I've heard they've had them for a while. So is this a new colorway? Hence the black and white filter. The Blade Cup Spring Cup dates have been announced. So it's the 28th to the 30th of April. It's gonna be both quad and inline. They've got shift in it mini rank. Sounds like it's just gonna be a massive jam and it's cash for tricks. And last time, the price pot was like 20 grand. So say if it's like $20 a trick, that's a thousand people potentially coming away with a little bit of coin in their pocket. I do like the cash for tricks idea. I reckon it could turn into chaos though right at the beginning. Everybody's super keen to get a little bit of cash. What I think they could also do is prizes for tricks. It's a bullseye fashion spree from a leading fashion chain. And what you'd do is you'd like announce what the prize is and then you could see who was actually keen to win that thing. Like first one might be like a kettle, you know? Not everybody's gonna go bonkers, but there might be somebody out there who's like, oh my goodness. I could actually really do with a kettle. <laughs> I'm gonna go out there and do some sort of trick and then you up it a little bit. Maybe it's a toasting machine and a little bit later in date and all expenses paid, trip for two to Tenerife and then everybody's like, oh, do you know what? Actually, I could do with a holiday, that'd be sick. I've seen somebody mention that they hadn't actually received their medal from the last competition. I'm still due a five pound boots voucher for this uh, piece of geography course like I did. That's never showed up, has it, man? But maybe this is why they're doing like cash for tricks. I don't know who's in control of the medals. Maybe they were like, right. This medal thing's an absolute fiasco. Let's just give them money on the spot and then we don't need to think about it. Rosie's recently dropped Portugalia. The video has a really great vibe, which seems to be the consensus in the comments as well. A very easy watch, lots of great spots in there, which really adds to the rewatch value, a variety of styles on show. I really like that they got the vast majority of the team together, minus Yuto, of course, which is a real shame, because it just gives them like a little bit more cohesion. Also really great seeing Grant Hazelton active on the streets. There's some really nice animation in there as well by Team Rider Matisse. Right near the end, there's this really sick like gap drop by Bobby, which is one of the more stunty maneuvers in the thing. And I think it was probably deserving of a second angle at least, like. It seemed like he just did it for a laugh. It feels like more brands are active on the team tours now, which is really great to see. Like, it's just a win-win for everybody, really. They get a holiday, we get loads of good footage. Hopefully this continues and uh, next time Rosie's managed to get uh, Yuto involved as well. Dead have introduced a 56mm flat top wheel, new for 2023, shaving down the classic 58mm profile. So it's going to be a little bit more ideal for riding flat, avoiding wheel bike, flatter area, better for toe rolls and heel rolls apparently. They've also got different Joro meters, so you want to stick the grippy ones on the outside and the less grippy ones on the inside. So it's even less wheel bite. They've not stopped there though. Dead are getting their fingers in all the wheel pies, man. They've teamed up with Ryan Gillette to design an 80 millimeter Rover wheel. Got a dog on there, a skate. You've got a variety of people doing various different things with their wheels. Made in the USA and they're 88 
A on the jaw I mean. I said, they are extra grippy. When those wheels see that floor coming around, they're like, give me a bit of that grip. And then ideal for the wizard and the urban skate. And then, well, whatever you want to do, really. Good to see more and more brands pushing into like different areas of like inline skating. I mean, is there going to be like another wizard collab frame? That'd be really cool. Maybe even like a dead hockey stick, something like that. The Hawkeye amongst you may have spotted the golden nugget looking wheels Greg Preston and Parker Richardson were pictured wearing, which Dead then teased on a really quick glimpse in one of their stories. A few people think it might be a Bellino wheel after some comments he made on a wheel scene interview, but I'm pretty sure Dead don't really do pro wheels. So, just have to see, I guess. Alex Sams wakes up in the morning and before he's even quenched his thirst with a glass of water, he's thinking, what is the most dog rough, sketchiest spot I can go and skate? Or can I make it more sketchy than it was before? Carl LeBlanc and the Chance of Rain boys are back again. They've got to be one of the sickest crews going. And the maddest thing is, I don't think they're officially associated with any brands, like any of them. So like, more power to them. Like, it's really sick that they're motivated to just get out there and do it of their own accord, go and make amazing content. And it is like, the skating in it is unbelievable. The spots are really great. I reckon that's gonna inspire people to go and skate anything, like any old sketchy setup. Get a clip on it, maybe try something a little bit dangerous. 90 minute banger, first month of the year, and there's loads of good content already. After Takeshi got his pro skate, and I mentioned him like a few other times in various videos, people were asking like, what's the what's the deal with Ito? Is he still about or what? Yeah, he is. He's got a school, man. He's teaching kids how to like fly like seagulls. A whole new world. Looks like he's still comfortable on a vert ramp, so uh, if you're interested in what he's up to, give him a follow, man. The minds behind LaRue recently dropped motion. You've got Nolan in there, Sadio, Lucas, Remy, Umberto, Stan and Gaston. Ducking and diving around France. Stan is an absolute lunatic sometimes. I can't believe some of the stuff he does. It's amazing. <laughs> really great spots in there, inspired trick selection. And this is all in like tied in with some merch they recently released. So you've got the green LaRue hoodie spelled out of rollerbladers in contorted light shapes. There's a green beanie to match and a grey jump as well. I think that one went slightly under the radar. It's a really good video though, so uh, go back and check that one out. I made that prediction about front Nugans coming in and it's already coming true. Farmer was straight in there, look at that one. Excellent stance on that. I'm telling you, the tassels and team tracksuits is just around the corner. I also mentioned synchronized game, which I was kind of joking about, but actually, it's in Street Disc by uh, Borkland Zoo. And I've got to say, like, it does actually look pretty good. I'm into it. Aside from the choreographed state, and it's all the usual mad tricks, creativity. Just a generally fun watch, isn't it? Go and check that one out. So was Julian Kudo robbed of Skater of the Year? With awards, no matter what, there is always complaints. One announced the winner of their polls a few weeks back. And for the most part, like, people were pretty pleased with the results. But let's actually look at some of the complaints. Only American people and that quizzical kind of emoji. Well, I mean, apart from Michael Bitterman winning one and also Nils, so that one's kind of like put to rest right there. But even CJ Wellsmore jumped in with, I'm surprised Breakout Blader of the Year isn't American. It definitely would have been a surprise if an American won it, because none of the top three were American. <laughs> that would have been a real stitch up. Would have been funny though, three non-Americans and then he's like, nah, sack off, let's just vote for this bloke instead. But I think there's like a common misconception that Americans always win this. The last eight breakout winners were non-American. The last time an American won breakout skater of the year was 2014 when it was Carson Stance. That was a long time ago. I think the real stinker with Breakout Blader of the Year is when people win it more than once. That doesn't really make sense to me. Ilya won it two years on a trot, 2020-2021. Yuto first won it in 2016. And then three years later, he won it in 2019. One aren't completely to blame for it is people nominating and then just one not doing quality control or just like being like, ah, we'll just leave them to it. Looking at my statistics for who watches my videos and talking to other people, the vast majority of our rollerblading audience are American. So you'd assume that when it comes to voting, the vast majority again are American, but that doesn't seem to play any bias in the results. Skater of the year is the big one, but if you look back through the results, so of the 13 winners, only six of them are American. So when it comes to this year and Julian Coudot not winning, I think you could probably like safely say it's not bias that's meant he's not won. It's not like 
a leaning towards American skaters that has prevented him from winning. Julian Cudeau got robbed. Rob suggests to me that the vast majority believed he was the clear winner and should have won by a landslide, but the voting was actually like quite close in reality. It was one of the closest polls. So it's not like he's been completely overlooked. 2% of the votes separated him and Nils. There was more of a gap between Julian and Sean, 14%. So what was it that Julian did that should have had him clearly winning this thing? All three put out brilliant video parts. All three won competitions. All three have varying styles, with Sean and Julian seeming to be on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Sean is super stylish, tech, creative, unique. Kudo has amplitude, really stunty, is wild. And then Nils fits somewhere in between, like combining them all, a little bit of stunts, some style, some creativity. This was also reflected in the style of competitions that they won. So Julian excels in like the park competitions where there's a lot of transition. Sean excels in the ones that are closer to street skating like the Boshy Pipe. All excellent in their preferred style of skating and the obstacles they choose to skate. But because they don't choose to skate the same things, it then makes it harder to judge. Looking at rollerblading on the whole, the preference now seems to be like the full package. There's a hyper focus on execution. People want really clean tricks and that's generally sacrificed the bigger you go. People love seeing a stunt and I hope the skaters that like prefer that style continue to do so, but there's decades of that style of skating that already exists. At one point, it felt like that was the only style of skating that was ever promoted or pushed was like big stunt skating. So people have already seen a lot of it at the highest level. The preference now is leaning towards skating that feels new progressing in terms of creativity and style, both of which have their foundations in control and control being the most important factor. Regardless of current style preferences, one of the differences is production. If you watch a section from each of them in a row, I think it's pretty clear there's better production on Sean and Nils's section. I'm sure you've heard people say, this person would be sponsored or that person would definitely get a sponsor if they just had a better filmer. And I think it's the same situation here. You may be unreal and at the top of the game, but it's how you're presenting it. It can make a difference in you getting recognition at the start of your career. So it's also definitely gonna make a difference when it comes to like winning awards. And it's not just internal as well. It's about how rollerblading is viewed from an outside perspective. Big stunts definitely capture people's attention, especially if you're on Instagram, you're flicking through, it's just a few seconds, you're like, oh wow, that was nuts, like on to the next one. When you've got it in a longer piece, you're like, oh yeah, sick, works for a while. But then like, if the production isn't there, and if it's just like stunt after stunt, maybe a little bit of B-roll here and there, you're like, nah, I'm not so sure. I think that's when people start to lose interest a little bit. When there's a higher production value, regardless of the subject, it's generally like easier to watch. Julian is an incredible skater and has been for a very long time. The sections he dropped last year were utterly ridiculous, man. They were so good. And I hope he continues to like skate that way. And I hope we continue to have like varying styles in rollerblading. But I just don't think he was robbed. Think about all the people that didn't even make the top three. Talking of Sean and Basement, they just dropped the trailer for their Mega Man inspired Zephyr 4.0 and it looks absolutely nuts. No time off, straight into 2023, firing on all cylinders and it looks like there's a clothing line to complement the video as well. A tee, a long sleeve, a hoodie, plus I'm sure there's going to be more. Another brand keeping up the pace is Mesmer. They just dropped Jimmy and Jeremy by Ian Walker. I really like how all their team riders can hold their own and this is just another great piece. Both skate like they're fully motivated with loads of six skating. Go and check this one out. It's absolutely Baltic in the UK again. It's the kind of weather where you just need cosy, warm clothing. And you can't be wearing those same sweatpants you've been having for like years that got like spaghetti and like mince pie dust on them from Christmas. Nah, man, get shift of them. Get some of the new muzzle sweatpants. They've got them in black and bark, regular fit, reflective back pocket print, and a tonal puff print on the legs. These are smart ones as well, so it's not like they're joggers you get and you just look like a complete toe rag. That filthy piece of toe rag. Everybody's gonna be traveling to Winter Clash. You wanna be warm and cozy, ideal. Muzzle are also up in the multimedia. They're coming at you with all sorts of stuff. You've got a mix in there from Muzzle's very own art director, Kaylee Wood, and you've got the Muzzmail newsletter as well. Articles, new products, music, inspiration. You can't just be like flicking through Instagram all the time, looking at videos and stuff like that. Actually read something. <laughs> if you are looking to do a little bit of reading, the skate company have released Skate Magazine too. On the cover, you've got Scott Blackmore there, the uh, U-Bend pilot jumping through two U-Bend bike racks. The thing comes with a poster and look at that stance. 
absolutely beautiful, man. You could you could frame that, put it up on your wall, and nobody would question it. They'd be like, oh, is that roll bed? Let's be like, that is beautiful. Where did you get that? This might be a first. A pro skate for an alias. A year after the Tactical V1 was released, Shredpool has the first pro model from Faction, complete with a wish frame. Faction have also released bandanas, so you can look like a bandit while you skate. Big thanks to all my Patreons for supporting. Your names are up on the screen if you want to join them. It's like, starts at three quid a month, exclusive videos, sneak peeks, all that kind of good stuff. Here's another couple of videos you can watch in the meantime, and I'll um, see you again soon. Spotty dog.